Are you struggling to figure out what you should put on your cloud computing resume? Then you're in the right place. I'll show you what cloud resume got me hired and what I would change if I started all over. Stick to the end to see how you can get your hands on my resume for free. Also, if you're interested in cloud computing or tech, subscribe now. Let's get started. Hey VFC fam, it's your boy Joshua Tech Dev Walker, Venti Fried Chicken author and global cloud slinger. To make this even more live action, we're gonna use the resume that got me hired years ago. This is based on me being in cloud for around five years now and currently serving as a cloud solutions architect at a global firm. I also help with a lot of technical interviews right now, so I see a lot of resumes. Surprisingly, this format is still working. A lot of people in my professional network have gotten hired from this template. But first, let me address one little elephant in the room. I know some of you are expecting me to finish the trifecta of the cloud computing project ideas. You can check out those videos here. That series is also hyper relevant to this topic as you need projects to put on paper. However, I've been traveling recently and had to remix the schedule a bit. I do promise that the Azure video will be delivered next week. One small disclaimer, I did add dummy names for corporations and for personal info for obvious reasons. I don't want to get robbed or sued. Let's get right into it. So obviously my resume isn't the end all be all, but um, like I said, it's been effective for others. So I'm happy to share. So um, right off the bat, you can see that I use some color. AWS uses orange um, and I use that as kind of an attention grabber. Also, if you're into color theory, orange is often associated with creativity. Um, and as someone that looks at a lot of technical resumes, I can say I don't see color much. So maybe this is some sauce that can help you stand out from your peers. Um, I also wanted to point out, even now, I always have a one-page resume, which can be a little controversial, as I know some people like having like a scroll resume. <laughs> um, uh, engineers are busy though so make you know a really succinct one-page resume that'll make it easier for them to say I want to talk to this person um, you know as quickly as possible because they're, they're busy also most human resources software does word scanning so I had Amazon Web Services here at the top um, that keyword will be picked up um, immediately so that's that's great my summary was also very short um, I just wanted to you know kind of get to the point and I added some good keywords in there based on the job description and I will say sitting on that that you need to make sure you're going off the job description and not just throwing out blanket resumes as it's a waste of your time and everyone's time or I guess not a waste of the automated systems time because it's just gonna kick it back I put my skills at the top um, I do want to point out that um, when you add skills it doesn't mean that you know you're an expert in all of them um, so if it's, you know, get out of your own head and add it if you've worked with it and can intelligibly talk through it and pick it up in a real world application if needed. Um, thank God I don't have to use Chef anymore. Um, sorry, not sorry. Uh, I just basically had all my hands-on experience. I could talk through um, how and why I use them, which I think is what, you, you know, you want out of a technical interview is to really figure out how the person thinks. Also make sure you know what you actually put on the resume. Sometimes, you know, you can ask someone about something and then they like a deer in the headlights and they, maybe they just copied a bunch of stuff from the internet. That stuff definitely translates through on interviews. Um, as you see, I added a bonus event as well. Um, and this was to show that I was gonna get certified soon, which went over well in the interview. Uh, the intent shows you understand that as a cloud professional, you have to be a lifelong learner as well as you know, Amazon's putting out a few services per week, um, just Amazon in general, but just all of the major cloud providers. Um, next thing to note is all my experience was freelance or, or on a volunteer basis. So uh, I think there's a lot of misconception when I tell people real world projects, what I mean is that it's real world applicable. Um, so the hands-on work is the hands-on work. It doesn't have to be paid work. Um, if you know my story, then you know I was working with startups and I was basically um, having them pay me an AWS credits versus like actual tenure as I just wanted to learn but also wanted to help them. Um, they were small businesses, uh, you know, as I'm saying startups, but they were still real world applications. So um, the key is whatever you put on here has to be real. Also, as you can see, I'm using keywords through the descriptions as well. Um, in hindsight, it would have been way more detailed in the actual job descriptions and talking about um, be a little more granular using percentages and things of that nature if I could do it all over again So maybe that's one big improvement that you can make um, I had some technical experience outside of cloud So I I did add that but it wasn't terribly relevant. It was just showing I was a well-rounded technical human being But 
if from going from like doing like a lot of front end development and some uh, back end development that feeds into the front end was like some of it was relevant, but not uh, super hyper relevant to cloud. So it was mainly just to kind of fill out the picture there to show that, hey, at least I'm a well-rounded technical professional. If you're a student or changing industries, just really put the relevant industry like However, if you're a student or changing industries, just put the relevant experience from that industry, i.e. managing teams, optimizing processes. There's probably a lot of things that translate to dev that you don't even think about. So um, if you're if you're a student and you, you know, I would say internships would be great for you to have there. Um, but if not, you know, there's a bunch of small real world applicable projects that you can do. Um, and if you're interested in those type of projects, uh, I'll put this link up again above. Last but not least, I added my education. If I had actual majored in computer science, I probably would have put it up top. But um, I went to a performing arts college and did um, like uh, recording arts for my bachelor's and then my master's was in entertainment business. So not hyper relevant. Um, as you can see, the School of Hard Knocks, um, you know, I, I put that more as a joke, but um, that's why I had it lower in the resume. And, but if I was, you know, in a top tier computer science program or something like that, I probably would have put it at the top. Um, but I hope this walkthrough helps you on your journey. Um, I'll tell you here in a second how you can get your hands on this resume. Um, hope the tips help.